get ready for the ultimate tournament in Mortal Kombat. Released in 1995 and based on the popular video game of the same name, fans are transported from the world of the game onto the big screen, where Raiden, the God of Thunder, has chosen three fighters, Johnny Cage, Sonya Blade, and Liu Kang, to take part in the Mortal Kombat Tournament. A tournament that is the ultimate battle between the Earth Realm and Outworld in this action-packed martial arts fantasy movie, which, although is engulfed in 90s cheese as well as awkward 90s special effects, is still an enjoyable guilty pleasure thanks to its stunts, atmosphere, and fulfillment of seeing popular characters from the game in movie format. So, time to get your adrenaline pumped as we get ready to watch some fighting while 90s techno music plays in the background as we look into 10 things that you didn't know about the Mortal Kombat movie. Let's check it out, of course. Number 10, the Mortal Kombat legend started thanks to Jean-Claude Van Damme. As we all know, Mortal Kombat started off as popular fighting video games. No news there. They were the creation of game programmer Ed Boon and video game designer John Tobias. And their initial idea was to make a video game about the muscles from Brussels himself, Jean-Claude Van Damme, who in the late 80s and early 90s had become a popular action movie star. However, making a fighting game revolving around Van Damme didn't go to plan. So instead, it was decided to include more fantastical characters and scenarios. However, the character Johnny Cage was still modelled after Van Damme. The first Mortal Kombat game was released in 1992, with Mortal Kombat 2 being released the following year in 1993 by Midway Games. Although popular with gamers, Mortal Kombat was heavily criticised for its use of violence, particularly its fatalities. Yep, the world of video games had expanded. This was no longer a domain of Mario jumping on Goombas, but now video games could also explore more brutal environments of blood and gore. Mortal Kombat more than left its mark in the video game medium, as it was the game franchise that led to the creation of the ESRB video game rating system, where now not all games were suitable for all ages. And of course, parents and teachers were against Mortal Kombat, which, as always in these situations, just made the kids want to play it even more. Number 9. One producer saw potential for a Mortal Kombat movie. In 1995, it would have been quite a gamble to make a theatrical movie based on a video game, as at that stage, there was now three of them, and neither one of them being successful. Starting in 1993 with the Super Mario Bros. movie, which was a flop. Then the Double Dragon movie in 1994, which was a flop. And then finally, also in 1994, fellow fighting beat-em-up game Street Fighter, which although did bring in some profit, was still torn apart by fans and critics. So needless to say, by the mid-90s, movies based on video games weren't exactly the flavour of the month. However, film producer Lawrence Kasanoff saw potential in a Mortal Kombat movie if done right. Just prior to Mortal Kombat, Kasanoff produced the Arnold Schwarzenegger action hit True Lies as well as several years earlier co-founding the production company Lightstorm Entertainment with James Cameron. New Line Cinema also came on board to distribute the movie, with a script that borrows elements from both the first and second Mortal Kombat games, along with British filmmaker Paul Anderson being hired as director. Anderson would go on to direct Event Horizon, as well as fellow video game-based movies, the Resident Evil series. So at that time when video games were quite risky, at least one producer believed in the source material. Number 8. Cameron Diaz had to leave the production due to an injury. One of the most interesting aspects of the Mortal Kombat movie was the casting of Special Forces Officer Sonya Blade. Actress Bridget Wilson auditioned for the part, 
But because the casting was such a lengthy process with many other actresses auditioning, she decided to go and star in the Adam Sandler movie Billy Madison instead, where she played Madison's third grade teacher and love interest, Veronica Vaughn. You know, the movie that features such heartfelt romantic lines like, so hot, want to touch the hiney. So instead, Mortal Kombat's production went with a young Cameron Diaz, as they were impressed with her performance in The Mask just one year earlier, which was also produced by New Line Cinema. However, during training for the movie, Diaz broke her wrist, and this took place just before filming was to start. With her injuries making her unable to film, the part would have to be recast. But thankfully, by this stage, Wilson had already filmed her Billy Madison scenes and was available for filming, so she was hired. Wilson also did her own stunts, but she wasn't without the odd scrapes here and there, as during filming she dislocated her shoulder, which thankfully the film crew were able to pop back in. And it wasn't all bad for Cameron Diaz, as she would go on to have a successful career. However, Bridget Wilson never quite made it as big, which I think is a shame, as everything I've seen her in, she has a very good on-screen presence. Number seven, other casting possibilities. So apart from Cameron Diaz, which other performers missed their chance to star in the Mortal Kombat movie? Well, Jean-Claude Van Damme was offered the part of Johnny Cage on the account that the character was modeled after him, but he turned the part down to star in the Street Fighter movie instead. Other actors also considered for the part include Johnny Depp and Tom Cruise, funny enough. Eventually, Lyndon Ashby was cast in the part. As for Raiden, the God of Thunder and Earth's Protector, originally Sean Connery was approached for the part, but he didn't want to do it. So instead, Christopher Lambert was cast in the role instead. The irony being both Connery and Lambert starred in the fantasy movie Highlander 10 years earlier. On a more tragic note, actor and stunt performer Steve James was cast as Jax, but shortly before filming had commenced, he died of illness. So the part was recast with Gregory McKinney and Brandon Lee was the top choice to play Liu Kang, of which the character was even modeled after Brandon Lee's father, Bruce. But sadly, Lee died of the tragic onset accident while filming The Crow, and the part was cast with actor and martial artist Robin Shaw. Also, adding to the cast of Mortal Kombat, co-creator Ed Bloon provided the voice of Scorpio, as well as legendary voice actor Frank Welker providing the voice of Reptile and Emperor of the Outworld. Number six, the original script was more brutal. The original script of Mortal Kombat was more in line with the video game that it was based off and was not gonna shy away from the brutal violence seen in the video game, as well as featuring more profanity, which would have seen the Mortal Kombat movie as an R-rated feature. However, the gore and the F-bombs had to be cut out, thanks to a deal the producers made with New Line Cinema, for Mortal Kombat to be rated PG-13, so younger kids can go and see it, and alas, bring in higher ticket sales. Personally, I think the movie would have been more badass if it had extra violence and was a hard R. But hey, I'm looking at the situation as a viewer and not from a marketing economic strategy. The movie was filmed on sets in Los Angeles as well as some remote locations in Thailand, such as Rayleigh Beach. Some of the Thailand locations were so remote, supposedly the only way the cast and crew could enter the locations was in long canoes. And yes, that includes the transportation of equipment as well. So to stop to and from trips between the location and mainland, an outhouse was set up on location. But going back to the LA set, supposedly on one occasion Tom Cruise visited the set, where an on-set medic slash security guard kicked the Hollywood heavyweight off the set on the account that he wasn't part of the movie. Well, he should have just accepted the role of Johnny Cage then. Then he could have seen the set whenever he wanted to. Number five, removed romantic subplot. While the production was trying to limit the amount of violence in Mortal Kombat, it seems that they also didn't want to limit too much, as actor Robin Shaw, who played Liu Kang, said that there was meant to be more of a love story developed around his character and Princess Katana, played by the insanely beautiful Alisa Soto but it was mainly decided to focus on the action and that having a romantic subplot thrown into the mix may slow things down. 
Soto previously starred in the Bond film License to Kill, and it's impossible for anyone to not fall in love with her. Ironically, Kari Hiroki Tagawa, who starred as Shang Tsung, also starred in License to Kill 2, making Mortal Kombat something of a License to Kill reunion. Number 4, Steven Spielberg was to star in Mortal Kombat. Yet none other than the legendary Steven Spielberg himself was to appear in the Mortal Kombat movie. Spielberg was apparently a fan of the game series, and he was to be the director who was filming Johnny Cage's movie at the start of the film. And it's not uncommon for Spielberg to have brief cameos in movies. He also appeared in the Blues Brothers and Austin Powers Goldmember. However, due to scheduling conflicts, Spielberg had to bow out of the humorous cameo as he was now unavailable. So instead, actor Sandy Helberg was cast as the director instead. And it's believed that he was cast due to bearing a resemblance to Spielberg. And yeah, the hat, glasses and vest totally make him look like Spielberg. I guess the moral of the story is that if you can't get Spielberg to star in your movie, then... Get someone who looks like Spielberg? I guess? Yeah, lesson learned. Number 3. The Goro Puppet was a nightmare to film. One of the most extravagant aspects of Mortal Kombat is the presentation of Goro, who was achieved by using a large animatronic puppet, which actually does really look quite impressive, especially considering if done these days, the character would just be entirely CGI, which in my book is boring and never looks quite real, as well as looking too animated. However, the Goro puppet was anything but a joy to work with. It actually cost the production $1 million to bring Goro to life, and he required 16 people to operate his movements. But the puppet would frequently malfunction and break down, which would cause constant production delays, which would add to the increased stress and tension with the Mortal Kombat crew. So the point is, although the Goro puppet looked impressive on screen, behind the cameras, it was a real nightmare. And the end fight scene was to include water. But that had to change as understandably there was a worry that water would interfere with Goro's electronics. Also, is it just me or does Goro's head without its skin look like the stuff of nightmares? Seriously, look how creepy and disturbing this thing is. Ugh. Number two, there is a prequel movie. New Line Cinema did something quite innovative with the release of Mortal Kombat, and that was to release a tie-in animated feature on home media like VHS and Laserdisc, with the animated movie Mortal Kombat The Journey Begins, which is an animated movie that acts as a prequel to the Mortal Kombat film. The Journey Begins actually explains backstories to several of the characters in greater detail, as well as use a variety of different animation styles. But the animated feature hasn't been fondly remembered by fans. But in addition to this animated feature, at the time of the movie's release, there was also a novelization that features several scenes that were cut from the final film, such as a fight between Jade and Sonya Blade, a premise that'll fade, but didn't put us off our lemonade. And that is no charade. The Mortal Kombat movie would also lead to an animated series called Mortal Kombat Defenders of the Realm, which only lasted for one season, consisting of 13 episodes, which was shown back to back with the Street Fighter animated series. And finally, from 1998 to 1999, there was a live action Mortal Kombat series known as Mortal Kombat Conquest, which I've never seen, but from research I've done, is kind of famous for being, well, pretty awful as well as being one of the worst things to come out of the Mortal Kombat brand, and something that most fans would rather forget. And there was a Mortal Kombat sequel, Annihilation, but that's a story for another video. If I can be bothered. Number 1, the release was pushed back. Mortal Kombat was going to be released in May 1995, but it was released was pushed back to August. This was apparently done as New Line Cinema thought that Mortal Kombat would perform better as a summer hit. But some articles that I've seen claim that it's because an early cut of the movie was shown to test audiences, who felt that there just wasn't enough action or fighting scenes, 
so more scenes of action had to be filmed, as well as the inclusion of the character Reptile. Just as Mortal Kombat was released, director Paul Anderson flew to Hawaii with his girlfriend in order to avoid the press, fleeing the chaos as he felt terrified that the movie would be a box office dud, and I guess he just didn't want to be there to try and pick up the pieces. However, when it was released, it opened up in the number one spot in the box office and would go on to make over $121 million on an $18 million budget, making it a very profitable film. The movie was so popular and successful, even the movie's soundtrack went platinum, reaching number 10 at the Billboard charts. For its time, it was the second highest August opener behind The Fugitive. And as of this moment, Mortal Kombat is the seventh highest grossing movie based on a video game of all time. And of course, there was those critics who knew better with their degrees and didn't like the movie. <laughs> Criticizing its plot, acting, and dialogue, with the New York Times going on to call it mythological junk food. Funny enough, Roger Ebert didn't like the movie as he thought the killings were too tame and that it was going to let down the fans of the game. Okay, I was not expecting that. However, the fans did love the movie. Some have even gone on to call Mortal Kombat one of the best video game based movies ever made. Movies that are based on video games is not an easy medium to get right, and more often they do tend to suck, or at least not reach fans' expectations. But there is just something about the Mortal Kombat movie which hit the right nerve at the right time, and proved that there can be a place in cinema for movies based on video games. Yeah, the movie is cheesy and definitely a product of its time, but that's what I personally enjoy from it. It has that sort of fun Power Rangers feel about it, which adds to its charm. I understand hardcore fans feeling disappointed with the movie, but as they say, the movie could have been worse. Anyway, I'm Minty, and 